These people looked their death in the eye. They survived disasters, climates unbearable for survival, and unusual diseases. Their stories inspire us, teach us to appreciate life, and believe in the power of the human spirit. Get ready for an amazing journey into the world of real heroes. Watch this video to the end and you will rethink your life. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Jane Lowe, Baby Jessica Jane Lowe, known as Baby Jessica, became the center of media attention in October 1987 when the 18-month-old girl fell into a narrow well in Texas. The incident turned into a real drama in front of the whole world. Television channels broadcast the rescue operation throughout the 58 hours of her rescue. The well, almost 7 meters deep and only 20 centimeters in diameter, turned out to be a death trap for the baby. Rescuers worked through various strategies to try to free Jane safely. The story ended with a happy ending. Jane was successfully rescued and taken to the hospital. This event showed not only the professionalism of the rescuers, but also the unity of people who prayed and worried for the fate of the child. Today, Jane Lowe lives an ordinary life, but her story remains one of the most memorable in the US media history. Unusual Tokyo Resident in 2006, an unusual discovery occurred in Tokyo, which shocked both the local population and the international community. In one of the city's apartments, a man discovered that strange things were happening in his house. Food was disappearing and things were changing their location. But the most amazing thing was that all the doors and windows always remained closed. After installing a video surveillance system, the men discovered something surprising. A certain woman came out of a large upper closet and used his food and things when the owner was not at home. It turned out that she had been living in this closet for several years. When detained, the woman explained that she did not have a permanent place of residence and decided to settle in the closet when the apartment seemed empty. She carefully hid when the owner came home and came out when he was not there. Lake of Family the Lika family has become a symbol of perseverance and survival in extreme conditions. Over many years of living in a secluded part of Siberia, they have adapted to a life almost completely cut off from the outside world. Returning to the distant 1930s, the Likovs, excluding the influence of the outside world and its problems, decided to become hermits in the deep taiga. Over the years, their hermit life became a legend. They compensated for the lack of modern technologies, medicines, and conveniences of civilization with the ability to survive relying on natural resources and age-old knowledge. For decades, they lived in harmony with nature, demonstrating amazing adaptability. The exceptional survival of the Lika family in the depth of the taiga is a symbol of human resilience and proof that even in the most difficult conditions, person is able to preserve humanity and the spirit of family. 33 Miners from Chile the year 2010 went down in the history of Chile not only as a year of terrible tragedy, but also as a time of amazing endurance, solidarity, and courage. On August 5th, a collapse occurred in the San Jose copper gold mine, cutting off the exit 33 miners. At a depth of 688 meters, in complete darkness, with limited supplies of food and water, these people were to fight for survival. The first 17 days after the collapse were the hardest. On the surface, no one knew whether the miners survived or not. However, below, despite extremely limited resources, the miners managed to remain hopeful and cooperate for the common good. They distributed among themselves the remaining food, which barely lasted for several days so that everyone could get at least a small portion. When rescuers managed to drill a hole to the blocked miners and establish communication, the world breathed a sigh of relief. From now on, food and water and medical supplies were delivered to the miners through this well. The entire rescue process lasted 69 days and required a lot of technical innovation. This operation became a real miracle of engineering as well as an example of an unbending will to live. When the last of the miners was brought to the surface, it was a moment of national unity for Chile and an inspiring event for the world. The triumph of the human spirit over the difficulties and tribulations of life. The 2000 
2010 San Jose Mine event reminded the world of the value of every human life and the need to remain hopeful and believe in the best even in the most critical situations. Wolf Girl from India Sometimes, history gives rise to stories that are more like legends. One such story is the case of a wolf girl from India, which occurred in 1920. Deep in the jungles of Bihar district, two little girls were found living with wolves. The eldest of them was named Kamala and the youngest Amala. According to witnesses, they ran on all fours, ate raw meat, and made sounds similar to wolf howls. The girls were discovered by priest Joseph Singh, who worked in an orphanage. Trying to integrate them into human society, he encountered a lot of problems. Kamala and Amala could not walk on two legs, did not understand human speech, and were completely unsocialized. Over time, thanks to the efforts of the priest and other guardians, the girls began to show signs of human behavior. However, the process of socialization was extremely slow and unfortunately, Amala died a year after their discovery. Kamala lived for several more years, gradually mastering some aspects of human life. She learned to walk on two legs and speak a few words, but until the end of her life, she was never able to fully adapt to life among people. The story of the wolf girls remains one of the most most mysterious in the annals of wildlife and human society. It raises questions about the nature of human personality, the influence of the environment on the formation of the individual, and the boundaries between humans and wildlife. Living Mummies in 1972, the Andes mountain peaks in South America became the site of an amazing discovery. At an altitude of about 3,600 meters, a crashed plane was found which went missing in 1941. But the most striking thing was not the location of the plane itself, but the state of the bodies of the passengers. Thanks to the cold and dry conditions at this altitude, the bodies of the dead turned into so-called living mummies. Their skin was dried out, but remained surprisingly intact and retained signs of life. This phenomenon is caused by the unique climatic conditions of mountainous areas, low temperatures, dry air, and ultraviolet radiation at high altitudes. The discovered mummies have become the subject of study for scientists from different countries. They analyze the condition of the bodies, trying to understand the processes that led to such unusual preservation. By that time, this disaster had already been forgotten, and the relatives of the victims had had the opportunity to learn about the fate of their loved ones and see them off on their last journey. 500 Days in a Cave Spanish speleologist Beatriz Flamini volunteered to spend 500 days 70 meters deep in a cave and was surprised at how quickly time flew by. She began her experiment at the age of 48 on November 20, 2021, and managed to celebrate two birthdays on the ground. Her days were filled with physical training, creativity, and reading. Flamini read 60 books and drank out about a thousand liters of water. At the same time, she believes that she is stuck in time. It seems to her that the world stopped at the very moment when she went down into the cave and after that nothing happened. But we know that over the past two years, the world has changed significantly. Her days were sometimes darkened when the cave became infested with flies, but the team that supervised her on the surface lifted her spirits with treats like fresh avocados, eggs, and new clothes. Despite her loneliness, Flamini maintained spiritual balance, being aware of her feelings and avoiding panic. On the surface, France, a delicious dinner dinner and a long-awaited shower await her. Beatrice is also planning a checkup with doctors. Speleologists, psychologists and other specialists are interested in how the experiment affected her health and psyche. Ernest Shackleton's Survival Story in 1914, Ernest Shackleton and his crew set sail on the Endurance to Antarctica with the intention of crossing it via the South Pole. However, the expedition's plans were ruined when frost and ice masses began to squeeze their ship, immersing them in an ice trap. The ship was crushed and destroyed, and the crew found themselves far from civilization in the cruel polar desert. This was a critical moment that required extraordinary leadership and determination. Shackleton, realizing the danger of the situation, decided to save his people regardless of personal safety. Instead of giving in to despair, he and his crew used the ship's lifeboats to travel through the icy wastes and cold waters of the Southern Ocean, hoping to reach safety. Overcoming harsh conditions, Shackleton's team members covered thousands of kilometers of ice and water. 
The trials they endured included starvation, frost burns, snowstorms, and the risk of freezing. But thanks to Shackleton's amazing will to live, teamwork, and indomitable spirit, every member of his team was saved. The journey of Shackleton and his crew became a symbol of survival, courage, and leadership in the most extreme conditions. Boy in a Bubble there are stories in the world of medicine that make us think about human resilience, courage, and the endless pursuit of life. One such story is the life of David Vatter, a boy who became known to the world as the boy in the bubble. David was born on September 21, 1971, with a severe immune system disorder known as CID, Severe Combined Immunodeficiency. As a result of this disease, his body was unable to resist infections. Any disease, even a cold, could be fatal for him. To protect David from the outside world and potential infections, doctors created a special sterile bubble, an isolated room where the boy could live without contact with the outside world. Everything that came into his bubble underwent strict sterilization. For most people, the idea of living in complete isolation sounds like a nightmare, but for David, it was the only way to survive. Despite his isolation, he was an inquisitive, educated, and cheerful boy. His family, doctors, and teachers interacted with him through special gloves and screens, providing him with education and social interaction. However, his isolation left its mark on David's psychological state. He experienced loneliness, stress, and depression, dreaming of one day leaving his bubble and living a full life. In 1984, at the age of 12, David left the bubble due to a medical procedure to treat his condition. Unfortunately, the procedure did not bring the expected results, and a few months later, David passed away. Thai School Children in a Cave the summer of 2018 will be remembered by the world as one of the most intense and touching rescue operations. On June 23, a group of 12 boys and their soccer coach went on an excursion to Tham Luan Cave in Thailand. An unexpected flood caused by rainfall blocked their exit and the trap slammed shut. The first days in the cave were spent waiting for the water to go away and for them to get out on their own. But the water did not go away and food supplies were quickly running out. The boys and coach were forced to drink water dripping from the ceiling and wait for help. The rescue operation became a real challenge. Due to the complexity of the route, narrow corridors, and rapidly changing water levels, divers had to overcome numerous obstacles. Volunteers and specialists from all over the world arrived to help, creating a real headquarters for saving children. The operation was complicated by the fact that many of the boys did not know how to swim, let alone dive. However, thanks to the efforts and professionalism of the divers, as well as the unbending will to live of the boys themselves, the rescuers managed to rescue several several people every day. Unfortunately, not everything went smoothly. 38-year-old Thai prisoner of war Salman Kunan died after running out of oxygen during the preparatory operation. But despite all the difficulties, on July 10th, all 12 boys and their coach were safely brought to the surface. They spent 17 days trapped, relying on fortitude and hope for rescue. Loneliness in the Sands of the Sahara the year 1994 brought one of the most exciting and amazing survival stories. Mario Prosperi, an Italian athlete and adventure enthusiast, decided to take part in one of the most difficult marathons in the world, the Marathon of the Sands. This race, which runs through the Sahara Desert, is known for its extreme and dangerous nature. During the race, a strong sandstorm separated Prosperi from the main group of competitors. Finding himself alone among the endless sands, he lost his bearings and got lost. Lost. Imagine the burning sun, unbearable thirst, a feeling of complete loneliness and despair. Prosperi was forced to adapt to the harsh desert conditions. To quench his thirst, he drank his urine and also tried to get moisture from the flesh of snakes and lizards. The days turned into an endless test of his spirit and body. After 10 days of wandering, having walked about 200 kilometers, Prosperi, emaciated and exhausted, was found in an oasis. His perseverance and desire to live despite all difficulties became a real inspiration for many. This story is a powerful reminder that the human spirit is capable of overcoming the most difficult circumstances and fighting for life until the very end. Julian Kapke 
1971, the plane flying from Lima to Pacalpa crashed due to a lightning strike in the dense jungle of Peru. There were 92 passengers on board, but only one of them survived, 17-year-old Julian Kupke. The plane disintegrated at high altitude and Julian fell huddled in her row of seats. When she came to her senses, she was surrounded by wild thickets and it began to rain and thunder. With a small wound on her arm and a broken collarbone, she began her journey in hopes of finding in help. Lucky by nature and with the basic knowledge of the jungle, thanks to her biology parents, Julianne decided to follow the river downstream, believing it would lead her to the people. During her 11 days in the jungle, she faced many dangers – wild animals, hunger, river currents and infections. However, her determination and instincts helped her move forward. Eating only fruit and water from the river, Julianne continued on her way. On the 11th day, when hope had almost abandoned her, she discovered a boat of the and a hut nearby. The jungle residents found her and provided first aid, after which they organized her evacuation. Cupcake later moved to Germany, where she fully recovered from her injuries. She studied biology at the University of Kiel and graduated in 1980. Kupke married in 1989 and became director of a research station in the forests of Peru in 2000 after the death of her father, who previously held this position. These stories show what a person is capable of when faced with danger and needs faith and hope to survive. These people remind us of the value of life and how important it is not to lose faith even in the most difficult circumstances. Thank you for watching and remember that miracles happen every day. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss news stories and share this video with your friends. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!